When Park Min Young felt her goodwill diminish, she looked at Park Jimin with eyes full of hatred. It was as if she wanted to shred him into hundreds of pieces to express her anger. Park Jimin, on the other hand, was at a loss about how to appease her. On one hand, he felt uneasy and thought to himself, my senior saved her, isn't that enough? If her goodwill doesn't increase, why does it have to decrease? In my senior's eyes, what's the difference between a negative 95 and a positive score? If I had known this earlier, I would have let her face her own demise. Truly, doing good brings resentment. Meanwhile, Park Min Young observed the group of ruffians lying unconscious on the ground. Afterward, she looked at Park Jimin and questioned coldly, Park Jimin, do you find joy in doing this? Do you think I'm like other knave girls, easily deceived by you? Please, next time you play the hero, act a bit more convincingly. I was just waiting for a ride when I encountered those thugs, and then you conveniently appeared just in time to play the hero. You overestimate your intelligence and underestimate mine. At this point, Park Min Young unexpectedly stepped forward, grabbed his shirt, and began speaking with a fierce and threatening tone. Kim Jisoo sacrificed her position as the student council president for you. You dare to plot against me. You wretch, you make me sick. After hearing this, Park Jimin appeared at a loss for how to explain. Truly, he hadn't expected Park Min Young to be so quick-witted. She believed that these individuals were there because Park Jimin had invited them, intentionally collaborating with him to stage a drama. In reality, the idea of handling eight people in a minute was unbelievable. Even Park Min Young, with her exceptional background, recognized that Park Jimin was putting on an act in front of her. As Park Jimin pondered this, he had to breathe in oxygen urgently, thinking, this guy's imagination is too much, isn't it? Is he delusional? Subsequently, Park Jimin attempted to explain, it's not true. The student council president can confirm. I truly have no acquaintance with these people. However, before Park Jimin could finish his sentence, Park Min Young directly shattered his words, saying, No need for explanations. The truth is clear before my eyes. I hope next time you won't play such childish games. Otherwise, it will only make me hate you more. And I hope you treat Kim Jisoo with respect. If you deceive her again, I'll make sure you regret it. After Park Min Young spoke, she immediately left, leaving Park Jimin standing there bewildered. He had no intention of chasing after her to explain further. He just stood there watching her retreating figure. In his heart, he quietly sighed. Misunderstandings. Just misunderstandings. At this moment, Park Jimin was extremely angry and didn't know where to vent his frustration. Fortunately, Puka also woke up. As he sat up, holding his head in pain, Park Jimin immediately delivered another heavy punch to his face. Then, he roared in anger. Damn! This cursed woman. Don't cause any more trouble next time. Seems like I hit something just now. Whatever. Forget it. Park Jimin was so enraged that his chest heaved, muttering curses to himself, then turned and walked away. Meanwhile, Puka lay unconscious on the ground, blood starting to trickle from his nose and mouth. Blame it on his small stature. Next time he goes out, he should light some incense before leaving. As Park Jimin walked, he couldn't help but think. Well, this girl seems to have a tendency towards delusional disorders, with an excessively guarded psyche. It's best not to tease her, lest it brings trouble. Moreover, she also has a preference for women. Indeed, there is no perfect woman in this world. Part Jimin drove back to school, muttering to himself as he went, truly unlucky, taking a step back and the more I think, the angrier I become. I really gave her face back there. Originally, Park Jimin didn't want to dwell on this matter anymore, but it lingered like a persistent fly, buzzing in his head, making him furious. Just then, the phone rang. My story begins with you. Because of you, I learned patience. And because of you, I gave up my bad habits. He mumbled while retrieving his phone from his pocket. Who could it be at this hour? Upon checking, he discovered that Yang Widbai was calling him. Park Jimin was quite surprised. He hadn't expected a call at this late hour. Yang Weibai continued calling. As he answered, Yang Weibai hurriedly asked, Hello, Park Jimin, do you have time tomorrow? Oh, what's going on? Oh, well, I don't have class tomorrow, and I wanted to invite you to watch a movie. Upon hearing that Yang Weibai wanted to watch a movie together, Park Jimin exclaimed in surprise. He was left gaping, not knowing how to respond. In his mind, 
Part Jimin began to ponder. Tomorrow, Kim Jisoo also invited me to watch a movie, and now Yang Wibai here wants to watch a movie with me too. What a coincidence. Why do these things overlap like this? The crucial point is that both girls took the initiative to invite him, and moreover, it's the first time they both want to watch a movie with him. It's really hard to refuse. Before me could decline, Yang Wibai choked up and added, This is the first time I've asked you to watch a movie. Please don't reject me. After Yang Wibai said that, it was truly difficult for Park Jimin to refuse. After a bit of calculation, he decided to agree, saying, Tomorrow, right? No problem. How could I reject Yang Wibai's request? However, I have a bit of work tomorrow, so I might not have a lot of time. It's okay if you have something else, just arrange it. I'll let you know when I'm free. Yang Wibai seemed to understand, not pressing for more. Part Jimin also didn't want to continue finding excuses, saying, Moreover, watching two movies in a day is quite comfortable in terms of time. If it's the same day, let it be the same day. So one in the morning and one in the afternoon, that's fine. A talented person should be willing to make an effort, right? The next morning at dawn, Part Jimin went to school as usual. In the afternoon, he had plans to watch a movie with Kim Jisoo and Park Min Young. However, as people often say, man proposes, God disposes, a significant change occurred. When the clock struck noon, and Park Jimin was having lunch in the school cafeteria, Song Jong Kei suddenly called. As soon as he answered, Jimin could hear Song Jong Kei's distressed groans, his voice filled with despair. Jimin, you Hai Rai rejected me. Park Jimin looked extremely skeptical and asked, What happened this time? Didn't you just break up with Lee Sung Guy, and now another Yu Hai Ri appears? Song Jong Ki, in tears, explained, I wanted to forget about Lee Sung Guy, so I saw another girlfriend. This girl is beautiful and outstanding. Plus, she studies in the same language department as Yang Wee Bai. Jimin, but today she rejected my invitation to watch a movie, and I already bought the tickets. Can you accompany me? Park Jimin truly didn't know what to say at this moment. He couldn't mention that he also had plans to watch a movie with two other girls today. After some thought, he agreed, as he and Song Jong Kai had a friendship of over 10 years. It was also an opportunity to spend some time at his place. After finishing his meal, around 1 p.m., he immediately drove to the entrance of Seoul University. Upon arrival, Park Jimin promptly sent a text message to Song Jong Kai. What's going on, Ma Yoon? Hurry up, I'm here, waiting for you. As Park Jimin sat in the car waiting, a slight bitter smile crossed his face. Thought today was just about watching two movies. Turns out it's three. Plans are changing rapidly. Well, my youth is my brother after all. Back in the days when I had no money, Sunbai always helped me out. Park Jimin encouraged himself. And then he began to calculate a reasonable time, avoiding any accidents on the road. Adding Song Jong Ki to the mix. I'll have to postpone the time with Kim Jisoo a bit. Initially, I plan to allocate time for comfort. But now, I have to manage this situation. After analyzing for a while, he arranged his schedule as follows. At 2 p.m., I'll watch a movie with some guy. In the afternoon at 5 p.m., I'll watch a movie with Kim Jisoo. I think this time is quite fitting. Not too early, nor too late. The movie should end around 7 p.m., and I can invite her for a meal. Then find an excuse to leave. At 8 p.m., I'll watch a movie with Yang Wibai. Feeling settled, Park Jimin sighed and thought to himself, Want to organize the time reasonably, but today can only be like this. A day with three movie sessions. After waiting for about five minutes, the car door suddenly opened. Park Jimin thought it was Sung Guy and turned to say, My Yoon, you're a bit late. However, what met his eyes was a girl he didn't recognize. Not only that, but she casually got into the car and started doing her makeup. Park Jimin, somewhat bewildered, asked, Ah, uh, who are you? She pretended to panic and replied, Oh, sorry, I was so absorbed in my makeup that I got into the wrong car. Park Jimin could tell she was doing it intentionally, mainly because he was driving a Ferrari, leading to such a significant misunderstanding. Afterwards, Park Jimin responded coldly, No problem, get off the car, and be more careful next time. She opened the car door to get out, but suddenly turned back and said, Little brother, even though I got into the wrong car, who knows, I might meet the man of my dreams. Speaking out loud, but in her mind, she was thinking, Get off the car, huh? If I get off, 
How can I possibly flirt with him? He drives such a luxurious car and looks handsome like this. I can't miss this chance. After considering, she decided to take out her phone and open her WeChat account. Then, facing part Jimin in the front seat, she said, Little brother, can you add my WeChat? I think we match well. The intention was too obvious, but Park Jimin remained steadfast in the midst of life's myriad changes. Despite holding the phone, he deliberately said, Oh, it's inconvenient. I don't have a phone. How could she resist? Park Jimin stopped her in her tracks. Looking at the phone in Park Jimin's hand, she felt a bit frustrated, but she understood the message. Subsequently, Park Jimin added coldly, Haha, unlike Ma Yoon, a traditional man who adheres to societal norms doesn't have independent thoughts. Men of our generation will never fall into the traps set by women. She listened with extreme anger. While opening the car door, she loudly exclaimed, Fine, I give up, I'm getting off the car. At the same moment, Song Jong Kai walked out from the school gate and coincidentally witnessed this scene. He was a bit startled and immediately asked, Hi Ri, what are you doing here? Park Jimin and Yu Hai Ri were both stunned simultaneously turning to him and saying, Psalm Jong Kai. Psalm Jong Kai couldn't imagine. Yu Hai Ri was with Park Jimin, and he couldn't accept it. His face turned pale, and he asked, Didn't you say you had to visit your mother in the hospital this afternoon? So, you can't go to the movies with me. Now, you're in his car. Could it be that you two? Listening to this, Park Jimin understood the situation. In his heart, he couldn't help but curse silently. Damn, it turns out this girl rejected Ma Yoon. He won't misunderstand, will he? Indeed, in this situation, it could easily lead to misunderstandings. Moreover, Yu Hai reused the excuse of refusing to go to the movies with Song Jong Ki, and now she was in Park Jimin's car, making the situation awkward. Park Jimin immediately got out of the car and turned to Song Jong Kai, saying, Ma Yoon, listen to my explanation. We, Song Jong Kai, Quickly grasped the situation after a moment of thought. Park Jimin just drove here. Sent the text to him five minutes ago. It's 100% you, Hyri, taking the initiative to pursue Park Jimin. After Song Jong Ki finished analyzing, he immediately interrupted Park Jimin, who was speaking. Indeed, the two are strangers and have no relationship. He didn't think that, despite her innocent appearance, she would create such a situation. Then, Song Jong Kai angrily pointed at Yu Hai Ri and interrogated, Hai Ri, you saw my friend driving a Ferrari, so you wanted to pursue him, but he didn't like you, so he asked you to get off the car. The two have no relationship, it's entirely because you desperately clung to my friend, isn't it? Park Jimin nodded in agreement as if confirming, Ah, that's right, absolutely right. Some guy, get on the car. Song Jong Kai gave her a sideways glance, then turned and got into the car, slamming the door without any sympathy. Yu Hai Ri asked hesitantly, Song Jong Kai, how do you keep making wealthy friends like this? But in her perception, he's not some guy in tattered clothes, living on only 800 yuan for living expenses each month. If I had known earlier, I wouldn't have refused his invitation to watch a movie today. At this moment, Yu Hai Ri looked at Song Jong Kai with a bit of admiration. On the way, noticing Song Jong Ki's sadness, Park Jimin took the opportunity to share some philosophical insights. Money is the measure of a person's value. Having money means having power. Money is the door to all opportunities. Without money, everything becomes difficult. After hearing this, Song Jong Ki felt that Park Jimin's words were quite profound, and he relaxed a bit in his heart. Soon, Park Jimin and Song Jong Ki arrived at the enchanting cinema. Here, Park Jimin noticed that the majority of people were couples, with a few pairs of sisters. Only he and Sung Guy were the two lone males relying on this cinema. Song Jong Ki's mood was similar to Park Jimin's. He felt countless curious eyes looking at him and Park Jimin. But looking at everyone, each in their couples, made him feel a bit like crying. Then, he confided in Park Jimin, Jimin, am I too naive? How do you always manage to attract high-class girls? while my love life is always so unlucky. Park Jimin didn't want to dwell on this issue too much, but still responded to him. I don't really know about that. But if I were to say, why should women pursue men? What's so noble about men that women have to pursue them? Do men have some kind of ancestral altar to worship? At this moment, 
Two girls behind them observe Park Jimin and Song Jong Ki with a somewhat amusing look. Then, they turned to each other and whispered, Those two are so strange. Two guys going to the movies together. Hey, whisper a bit, they might be gay. Although they spoke in hushed tones, it seemed like the two girls wanted Park Jimin and Song Jong Ki to hear this mocking remark. Upon hearing this, Park Jimin's mouth curled into a smile, and he deliberately spoke a bit louder for the two girls behind to hear. The faster you reveal your needs, the more vulnerable you become. The dating scene is like a battlefield. It's not all fun and games. The more you flatter, the more women feel you're pathetic. The key isn't the tactics, but whether you are strong enough. Giving money to women to spend is a foolish man. Being a provider is what makes a real man. Psalm Jung Ki, upon hearing this, felt like his entire circulatory system had just been unclogged. His mind became remarkably clear, as if in a state of enlightenment. What you said is absolutely right. After understanding the intricacies of the world, he excitedly grasped Park Jimin's hand, imploring, Master, disciple has gained enlightenment. Please teach me the ways to become stronger. This scene caught the attention, creating an intense excitement for the two girls nearby, who whispered, They're about to get married. Park Jimin, feeling flustered, said, My Yoon, calm down, don't do this. People are watching. However, Park Jimin soon adopted a nonchalant attitude, going along with Song Jong Ki's mood. My Yoon, I have nothing to teach you. I'm just a bit more handsome, a bit wealthier, and have a few more girlfriends. In reality, you, struggling like this, are quite perplexing to us ordinary men. Song Jong Ki glared with disdain, feeling a bit annoyed that Park Jimin was deliberately showing off. Then, in a cold tone, he said, Jimin, stop talking. If you keep going, I'm afraid I won't be able to resist stabbing you to death. Having said this, the two focused on the movie in front of them. After leaving the theater, Son Jong Kai looked at Park Jimin and said with a smile, Talking with you, Jimin makes me feel much better. Lately, I've been bothered, always worried that I might. Park Jimin didn't pay much attention to his words, glancing at his phone to see it was past four o'clock in the afternoon. Turning to Song Jong Ki, he interrupted, saying, Don't talk about this later. If you want to repay me, do it right now. Having said that, Park Jimin paused, then earnestly took Song Jong Ki's hand and continued, In about two hours, call me. Consider it as you've done me a big favor. From him, the fact that Park Jimin came to watch a movie with him today was already deeply appreciated. Immediately, Song Jong Ki nodded in agreement but still had a bit of curiosity, asking, Calling is fine, but why? The two girls beside them were still caught up in this scene, gleefully commenting, I'm telling you, those two are definitely a couple. The girl next to them, who had yet to have a boyfriend, sighed, Ah, what's wrong with this era? Why don't handsome guys like female students? After giving advice to Song Jong Ki, Park Jimin didn't explain further and quickly left, thinking to himself, Why? Of course, it's to have a reason to escape from Kim Jisoo and then go on another date. Exiting the enchanting movie theater, he went straight to the IMAX cinema. When he reached the parking lot, he hurriedly ran towards it. From a distance, Park Jimin saw Kim Jisoo waiting for him and silently thought, Luckily, I made it in time. This was the first time they were going to watch a movie together, so she arrived at the cinema very early. Not only that, but Kim Jisoo looked exceptionally beautiful today, with a hot figure that left Park Jimin stunned for a while. After a moment, Kim Jisoo, feeling impatient, glanced at her watch and muttered, It's starting in half an hour. Why hasn't Park Jimin arrived yet? Kim Jisoo stood waiting for Park Jimin at the cinema entrance, causing many male students to be strongly shaken in their hearts. Some couldn't resist and approached her a bit. Finally, there were boys who couldn't bear the beauty and took the initiative to introduce themselves. Hello, little sister, greetings. My name is Sun Sung Woo. I've seen you standing here for half a day. Can I add you on WeChat? Although it's a bit abrupt, if I don't take the initiative today, I might regret it for the rest of my life. Please, please. Kim Jisoo was somewhat surprised to hear the man open his mouth asking for her wet chat. However, when she turned to look, she saw a tall and incredibly handsome young man greeting her with a very polite attitude, making it hard for others to feel a virgin. Kim Jisoo politely declined, saying I'm sorry, I have another appointment, and it's not convenient. He didn't appear disappointed at all. 
his expression naturally agreeing with her tenfold. Little sister, it's genuinely inconvenient. I might become a disturbance for you, but I'm not a bad person. I just want to add you on wet chat. I won't bother your date. If you find me annoying, you can delete me. Consider it fulfilling one of my wishes. Upon hearing this, Kim Jisoo began to waver. His words were too clever, his language sincere, and his demeanor convincing. The final statement, you can delete me, was indeed a masterstroke. He relinquished all control to Kim Jisoo, skillfully curtailing any sophisticated retorts. It was undoubtedly the move of a seasoned player in the game of life. Park Jimin, feeling quite uneasy after hearing this, stepped forward to pat the smooth talker on the shoulder from behind. Then, with a wink, he said, Your friend has been rejected, and persisting won't make a difference. Come on, let me show you how to impress someone. After Park Jimin finished speaking, he immediately approached Kim Jisoo. His actions resembled that of a wild beast, forcefully pinning her against the wall, leaving Kim Jisoo somewhat startled. He then leaned in, looking directly into her eyes with a flirtatious smile, saying, Little sister, you're truly beautiful. Can we find a more secluded place to have a deeper conversation? As soon as Park Jimin finished his sentence, Kim Jisoo blushed and appeared flustered. In her eyes, Park Jimin was a strong and determined man. She looked like a deer caught in the headlights, her face turning rosy. Sun Sung Woo, witnessing Park Jimin's actions, showed disdain, thinking, Is this all there is? Are you kidding? In his eyes, Park Jimin appeared to be a skilled womanizer. But in reality, he was just an ordinary guy. His techniques lacked sophistication and were somewhat crude. Moreover, his skills were inferior, adding insult to injury. Showing off in front of him was like waving an axe in front of a skilled carpenter, making him feel extremely uncomfortable. However, what happened next was unexpected. The beauty in front of them smiled and nodded in agreement. She even pulled the rogue away, showing an embarrassed expression. This immediately left Sun Sung Woo utterly shocked. His face turned extremely angry, and he began to doubt the meaning of life, along with his top-notch flirting skills. How could this work? Is this really okay? Could beautiful women also be into this kind of madness? I can't understand. Even the boys who had been observing her since earlier couldn't help but widen their eyes and drop their jaws, falling into a state similar to his. So this works, huh? Sun Sung Woo pondered but found no solution. He decided to add Park Jimin's flirting method to his encyclopedia and eagerly wanted to test it out immediately. Inside the theater, the screening wasn't scheduled to start until 5 p.m., and with half an hour to spare, Kim Jisoo and Park Jimin took their time. First, they went to the ticket counter together, also grabbing two drinks. While waiting for the theater to open, a moment later, room number five became accessible. After a short wait, the film began. At this point in the movie, it was the most intense scene. The protagonist was using his foot to kick a missile, with the ground cracking and spreading beneath him. It was a highly dramatic and captivating moment. But Park Jimin showed little interest. Each time Kim Jisoo glanced over, she noticed him glued to his phone. Observing this, Kim Jisoo inquired, Park Jimin, do you like this movie? I see you're constantly on your phone. I thought you might enjoy this genre. In reality, Park Jimin had just finished watching the film with Song Jong Kai. Rewatching it was a bit reluctant for him, but he could still accept it, considering it as a recap of the screenplay. However, when Kim Jisoo asked, Park Jimin couldn't bring himself to say that. He quickly came up with an excuse, saying, Oh no, it's not as you think. Lately, my family has been a bit busy, dealing with some bothersome matters. The speaker is unintentional, but the listener is attentive. Quickly, within her mind, she starts to speculate. He has a huge family fortune that needs to be inherited. Surely, the pressure must be enormous. We, ordinary people with carefree lives, don't realize how much he silently endures. Everyone sees Park Jimin's extraordinary talent and skills, but they don't know how much sweat and effort he has put into it behind the scenes. He inherits a 50 billion legacy from his family. He plays the piano so well, one can only wonder how much time he spent practicing. He is so skilled, and it's the result of rigorous training from childhood. He is an aristocratic heir, someone who has been educated excellently in the noble class, carrying the expectations of the family. But he never complains only silently bears his responsibilities. Because of this, he often feels restless and anxious. He works so hard, 
and yet I, for my personal gain, occupy his time to watch a movie with him. I am a selfish and despicable woman. The more Kim Jisoo reflects within herself, the more her heart aches, and the more she feels a pang of conscience. Afterward, she gently took Park Jimin's hand, hoping to console him in some small way. Immediately, Park Jimin sensed Kim Jisoo holding his hand. He turned to glance at her, realizing that something was not quite right. Tears streamed down Kim Jisoo's face like rain, and her sobbing intensified. This sight left Park Jimin puzzled, thinking to himself, Why is Kim Jisoo crying like this? This isn't an action movie with gunfire. Why would she cry watching a fight scene? In reality, Park Jimin had been waiting for a call from Song jong ki for over two hours. However, Song jong ki hadn't called him yet. Without that call, Park Jimin couldn't find an excuse to leave. The longer he waited, the more anxious and uneasy he felt. Over two hours passed, and finally the movie came to an end. People often say that at the conclusion of a good movie, one feels a sense of regret. However, for Park Jimin, that extended period felt like a torture. As the screen displayed the end, he couldn't help but mutter under his breath. Finally, the movie is over. Park Jimin and Kim Jisoo stepped out of the movie theater, and the city was already aglow with dazzling lights. Golden lights adorned the streets, creating a romantic and dreamy atmosphere. This was an ideal time for couples in love. Kim Jisoo looked at Park Jimin with eyes full of affection. She gently took his hand and suggested, Park Jimin, are you hungry? We should find a place to eat, right? I'm hungry too. How about having dinner together? Just as she started to speak, the familiar ringtone echoed. For you, I've learned how to be patient. For you, I've abandoned my bad habits. Park Jimin raised his phone and discovered that it was Song Jong Ki's number calling. A joyful smile spread across his face. Ma Yoon is indeed a good friend. The timing of the call is perfect. A good friend will never let you down. Park Jimin answered the phone with excitement. Hello, Jong Kai. What's up? Why does it sound serious? I'll be right there. Beside her, Kim Jisoo observed his strong reaction and couldn't help but question. What's going on? Even Song Jong Ki on the other end doesn't understand what's happening. She felt that this person's words were a bit deceptive and unreliable. Park Jimin hung up the phone, nervously scratched his head, and said, Kim Jisoo, I might have to leave urgently for something important. My friend has encountered an issue. Hearing this, Kim Jisoo felt a bit unhappy, but tried to appear understanding. It's okay, if you've had something to do, go ahead, I'll be fine. Park Jimin played his part convincingly, making himself look panicked as he hurriedly ran off. Kim Jisoo watched Park Jimin's hurried departure, and in her mind, she couldn't help but think, Park Jimin's friend must be facing something significant. He's truly a man with feelings and principles. Once out of Kim Jisoo's sight, Park Jimin returned to his car and casually sat down. Holding up his phone, he proudly thought to himself, I am indeed a genius. Next, Let's move on to another appointment. Oh, the art of playing hard to get. Yang Wei Bai lives in the International Agency Apartment, a residential building designed and constructed with the highest quality, equipped with world-class facilities and services. It is located quite close to the city center, making it a convenient location. The residents are mostly successful individuals with high social status, making it an ideal choice for those seeking a luxurious, classy, and convenient living space. Following the location shared by Yang Wibai, Park Jimin arrived at the apartment building shortly afterward. Upon arrival, he took out his phone and sent a notification to Yang Wibai. I've arrived at your rented apartment. Yeah, come down. I'll wait for you for two minutes. While waiting, Park Jimin pondered. Finally, only one more appointment left. The whole day has passed like a whirlwind. Next time, I'll definitely not multitask like this again. Leaning against his car. He reflected on how foolishly he had played today, full of regret and self-blame. Suddenly, Yang Weibai's soft voice came from behind. Park Jimin, sorry. Did you wait for too long? Park Jimin turned his head towards the source of the sound, and in his line of sight was a girl with shiny long hair, bright fair skin, large round eyes, and a cheerful smile. She was dressed in a white crop top, blue jeans, and white sneakers. The cleverly short top showcased her attractive and lively personality along with an enticing waistline. Upon seeing her, Park Jimin couldn't help but be intrigued. 
She looks exceptionally beautiful today. Yang, his classmate, had the ability to pull off any style, indeed a beauty among beauties. Yang Wei Bai's captivating beauty left Park Jimin, somewhat entranced until she approached and reminded him, snapping him out of this mesmerizing trance. Let's go, shall we? Ready to go. As Park Jimin walked alongside her, dark thoughts filled his mind incessantly. If today's date goes smoothly, it might lead to something more with Yang Wei Bai. After getting in the car, Park Jimin decided to drive to a movie theater quite far away, halfway across Dayong Bakung's hemisphere, also as a precaution to avoid being seen or having an accident in the middle of the road. When they entered the cinema, he tried to stay enthusiastic for a while. But eventually, he couldn't fake it anymore and openly showed his boredom. Despite Yang Wei Bai's inquiries, Park Jimin consistently declined to avoid tarnishing his charming image. Having finished the movie, it was already 11.30 p.m. The city adorned itself with a new coat, shimmering and more enchanting than ever. Electric lights from buildings, restaurants, and bars radiated like sparkling beams, transforming the city into a vibrant and colorful painting. Park Jimin began to feel restless and uneasy. Looking at the stunning Yang Wei Bai beside him, he felt a surge of excitement and his heart beat continuously. Eventually, Park Jimin couldn't resist the urge to boldly take her hand. Yang Wei Bai's hand was as soft as if it had no bones, making him feel like touching a fluffy cloud, making him want to hold on to it forever. Yang Wei Bai didn't resist. Her face blushed with extreme shyness. Both of them felt a bit awkward, yet their hearts were filled with joy. Despite the late hour, Park Jimin wanted to have a late-night meal with her. They casually found a roadside eatery. Since Park Jimin hadn't eaten anything the whole evening, he had corn at the cinema that made him nauseous. At the restaurant, Park Jimin and Yang Wei Bai looked like a loving couple, enjoying grilled skewers. The two exchanged affectionate glances, engaged in cheerful conversation, and shared laughter, reveling in their happiness. Around 1 a.m., Park Jimin and Yang Wei Bai finished their late-night meal. Afterward, he drove Yang Wei Bai back to the Asian Sea International Apartment. Everything had gone smoothly that day and the unexpected incidents or accidents were avoided. The success was beyond expectations. Despite the fatigue from running around, it was all worth it. As Yang Wei Bai got out of the car, she looked at him with blushing embarrassment and said, Oh, Park Jimin, you should go home and rest early. Thank you for hanging out with me until so late. I had a great time. However, after she had taken a few steps, Park Jimin suddenly called out, Oh, Yang Wei Bai, can I come over for a drink? Park Jimin didn't know how he ended up saying that perhaps some unlucky fate was playing tricks on him. He felt his heart starting to beat irregularly, and the atmosphere seemed to freeze with a hint of awkwardness. As soon as the words left his mouth, Yang Wei Bai felt a chill running down her spine, as if an unusual breeze surrounded her. Her heartbeat became erratic, as if it wanted to leap out of her chest. After a moment, she too seemed compelled by some mysterious force and said, Hick, well, you can come up. The situation was becoming smoother day by day. Park Jimin immediately got out of the car, locked it, and followed her. The apartment building had 19 floors, and Yang Wei Bai lived on the 15th floor. Her apartment was elegantly designed with a modern touch. Additionally, the condominium was extremely convenient, featuring amenities such as a swimming pool, gym, children's playground, cafe, mini-mart, cleaning services, and 24 7 security. It seemed to lack almost nothing. It must be said that her family was quite well off to afford such a place. Park Jimin felt a bit awkward, not knowing what to do. After finishing his drink, he wanted to take a shower. However, Yang Wei Bai remained silent, sitting there. The sound of water dropping echoed, making Yang Wei Bai blush and feel a bit flustered. She didn't know what to do while Park Jimin was in the shower. There was only one wall between them. Yang Wei Bai thought, What's happening today? This is not like what I usually do. I thought he would just come over for a drink and then leave. Who would have expected that after finishing his drink, he would say it's late and he wants to stay overnight? And I agreed. A single man and a beautiful unmarried woman staying in the same room. It's very likely that something unintended might happen. The flame surged within Yang Wei Bai, almost impossible to extinguish. They had a tendency to grow even stronger bordering on ferocity. In her mind, she continuously played out various scenarios. What should I do if he makes a demand later? 
If he wants it, it's not like I can't agree. What am I even thinking? Yang Wibi knew that Park Jimin had ill intentions, but she couldn't resist. A thrilling sensation was rising within her, and the air in the room became increasingly stifling, as if something were spreading everywhere. Her heart pounded louder, and her cheeks grew warmer. Sitting on the sofa, Yang Wibi contemplated what might happen next. This feels surreal, like I'm dreaming. Suddenly, she noticed something protruding from Park Jimin's pocket. Curious, she reached out and was startled to find movie tickets. She held the tickets in her hand, speechless. Why are there four movie tickets? Is he going to watch a movie with another girl? This was it, caught red-handed with no explanation. Truly, he was an inexperienced young man. The atmosphere instantly turned chilly, as if plummeting to a freezing point. Yang went by, initially embarrassed, with flushed cheeks, suddenly turned icy cold within the blink of an eye. Later, Yang Weibai recalled the unusual behavior of Park Jimin throughout the day, and she understood the reason. Park Jimin claimed to be busy and distracted during the movie, saying, Turns out, he had watched Warrior Lane 14 with another girl before. The evidence is mountainous. There's nothing more to say. Yang Weibai couldn't fathom it. She couldn't bear the thought of her boyfriend going on a date with someone else, let alone watching the same movie. The more she thought about it, the more she felt her heart being squeezed. She didn't know what to do, just sat in silence, watching Park Jimin showering inside. She felt foolish and naive. She had loved a man who didn't love her. Park Jimin was still oblivious to the impending disaster. In the bathroom, he continued to shower, his mind wandering to the alluring figure of Yang Weibai. He joyfully sang, Where is it flowing, flowing, lost in your dream sinking deep, sinking deep, I'm done showering. Exiting the bathroom, Park Jimin immediately sensed that something was amiss in the room. He looked at the sofa and saw Yang Weibai sitting there, her face pale, eyes reddened. On the table, next to the tea tray, lay four movie tickets. Park Jimin was immediately stunned. Did the plan fail? Today, he had meticulously prepared and considered every aspect of the plan. Every small detail was perfected, preventing any possible mishaps. However, in the end, an insignificant mistake had exposed his perfect plan. At this moment, even jumping into the Yellow River wouldn't wash away his sins. But who was Part Jimin, the one chosen by the system? How could a small detail like this lead to failure? Instantly, he formulated a strategy, forcing himself to appear calm, as if there had been no separation at all. In just a moment, the mental score equivalent to three times that of an average person's brain was effective. Seeing Park Jimin's face change upon seeing the four tickets, Yang Wibi knew he was hiding something. However, Park Jimin dismissed it, acting as if nothing was wrong. This further fueled Yang Wibi's anger as she shouted, Park Jimin, what the heck? Why are there four movie tickets in your pocket? Are you still going to the movies with another girl today? If you don't like me, just reject me. Why do you have to step into my life? Then go on a date with another girl? Have you ever thought about my feelings? Get out, I don't want to see you anymore. Yang Weibai, subtracting 10 points for Goodwill. Currently, Goodwill stands at 75 points. Part Jimin smirked, a sense of self-amusement evident in his heart. This situation, I foresaw it long ago. It's time to unveil the final move. Then, Part Jimin looked at Yang Weibai with a disappointed gaze. It turns out, in your heart, I'm not that trustworthy. Just with four movie tickets, I can turn everything you invested into dust. Yang Weibei widened his eyes, unable to believe what he was hearing. He then shouted with determination, Do you still want to deny it? How do you expect me to trust you? The truth is as clear as day. Your front foot goes to the movies with other girls, while your back foot goes with me. Moreover, it's the same movie. You were truly outrageous. Do you think I'm so foolish not to see through it? She couldn't imagine how. With evidence as mountainous as it was, Park Jimin still refused to admit. He could still appear innocent, as if the one acting against morality wasn't him, but her. Faced with Yang Wee Bai's interrogation, Park Jimin remained silent. He simply raised his phone and called Song Jong Ki, his voice low, but filled with determination. Ask Song Jong Ki, today, whether he went to the movies with other girls or not. By now, it was almost half past midnight and he put the phone on speaker. The ringing tone echoed in the room. After a full minute of contemplation, the two stood facing each other, 
locking eyes without uttering a word. The atmosphere became tense and stifling. On the other end of the line, Song Jong Ki's groggy voice came through. Hello, Jimin. What's up so late at night? As Song Jong Ki's voice echoed from the other end, Yang Wibai became even more tense. She snatched the phone from Park Jimin's hand, then regained her composure and asked in a calm and deep voice, Song Jong Ki, this is Yang Wibai. I want to ask if you went to the movies with Park Jimin today. Yeah, we watched Warriors of the Wolf 14. Initially, I was planning to invite you Hyrie to watch it, but she turned me down. So, I ended up dragging Jimin along. Song Jong Ke responded subconsciously, but soon he recognized it as a woman's voice. He immediately jolted in surprise and exclaimed, Isn't this Jimin's phone? Why you have it? Are you two together? Park Jimin's smooth talk really got you damn. Unbelievable. This guy can't fool around anymore. All right. No problem. Don't bother him anymore. Goodbye, Ima Yoon. After the call ended, Yang Wibai let out a sigh of relief. She still didn't fully trust, but at least she had a glimmer of hope. So, I misunderstood Park Jimin. She reassured herself, but then thought, no. What if Ma Yoon is covering up for him? Yu Hai Rei is in the same class as me. I'll confirm again. After a brief consideration, Yang Wibai picked up her mobile phone and called Yu Hai Rei. At this moment, Yu Hai Rei was in an upscale bar, swaying to the music, surrounded by wealthy young men. Suddenly, her phone rang. Hello, Yang Miss. What's up? Hai Rei, did Ma Yoon make plans with you to watch a movie yesterday? Upon hearing Yang Wei Bai inquire about this, she still felt a bit regretful as she answered. Yes, he did. He invited me to watch Warriors of the Wolf 14. But I declined. I saw a handsome guy driving a Ferrari come to pick him up too. If I had known he had such wide connections, I would have agreed. It's a pity. After hanging up, Yang Wei Bai let out a sigh of relief. She felt like a burden had been lifted from her shoulders. Looking at her expression. Park Jimin knew he had escaped disaster number 82, but he still appeared unjustly irritated, saying, So, it's confirmed. Do we need to double-check my phone records? Yang Weibai, realizing she had accused Park Jimin wrongly, now appeared remorseful and said, Park Jimin, I, I was wrong. Park Jimin didn't want to hear any more. He appeared disappointed and said, Yang Weibai, today, I am truly disappointed in you. The angrier Park Jimin became, the more ashamed Yang Wei Bai felt. However, when she saw him about to leave, she became even more panicked. Park Jimin, I was wrong. Please don't be angry. I shouldn't have misunderstood you. Please forgive me. Upon hearing this, Park Jimin didn't turn back, but pushed the door to leave. Although she didn't know, despite Park Jimin's outward anger, he was deeply startled inside. As soon as he stepped outside, he couldn't help but sigh with relief. I almost messed up. Luckily, I was prepared. If not, I would have capsized this time. Yesterday, Park Jimin made every effort to make Yang Weibi no longer doubt him. Yang Weibi realized her mistake and felt increasingly regretful. She thought about how Park Jimin had done so much for her, and yet she turned around to suspect him, even kicking him out of the house. The more she thought, the worse Yang Weibi felt about herself, sensing a bit of ingratitude. She was afraid that Park Jimin might be hurt, so early in the morning, she took the initiative to send him an apologetic message. I'm sorry for misunderstanding you last night. You were right. We should trust each other. I've reconsidered. Please forgive me. It's okay. Yang would buy. This is also because you didn't explain clearly. I'm sorry too. After sending this message, Park Jimin immediately stashed his phone in his pocket, wanting to pay no further attention to the matter. However, he didn't know that this message left Yang Wei Bai feeling puzzled. Even though it was my fault, he took the initiative to apologize. He's really warm. Yang Wei Bai's goodwill increased by 10. Yang Wei Bai's goodwill increased by 10. Yang Wei Bai's goodwill increased by 1, bringing her goodwill score to 96. Hearing the system's reminder, Park Jimin sighed deeply. The goodwill has increased again, now one point higher than before. Next time, I shouldn't be so romantic. I almost caused harm to myself. The system continued to announce. Target number six successfully flattered Yang Wibai, achieving a breakthrough in goodwill with a score of 96, rewarded with a bonus of 10 reinforcement points. 
Despite Park Jimin's lingering fear, the surprising sound of the system caught his attention. Park Jimin suddenly realized that the goodwill not only stopped at 95 points but could continue to increase, and each goodwill point could even bring 10 reinforcement points. With this revelation, Park Jimin's thought process became clearer. He reminded himself to distinguish how he treated the flattery target. Therefore, Park Jimin classified targets into two types. The first type focused on being a tool for reverse infiltration, earning the system's rewards, and the second type involved nurturing a good relationship, aiming to raise the goodwill to a level that would make her completely enamored, even if it meant spending tens or hundreds of billions without hesitation. Regardless, it's the system's money, and even kids know how to choose. I want everything. Who wouldn't dream of having a harem full of beautiful women? As Park Jimin walked and pondered, a few excited girls began chatting. I heard Quan Jiayong, the head of our school, is sponsoring the basketball team and organizing a street basketball tournament. That's right, at the school stadium. Let's go watch. The basketball team has many handsome guys. Hearing this, Park Jimin felt intrigued. Quan Jiayong, the street king, sounds interesting. Let's go check it out. The girls spoke while running towards the sports field, and Park Jimin quickly followed. Oh, it's crowded like this in winter. Little did Park Jimin expect that the basketball court, usually deserted, was now packed with people, lively and unusual. Everywhere were girls, constituting more than 70%. Quan Jiayong changed into his game jersey and stepped onto the basketball court, displaying excellent skills. Immediately, he caused countless girls to scream and shout, We love you, head Quan Jiayong. Keep it up. We want to have your babies. Head Quan Ji Young. Park Jimin stood amidst the crowd, the screams of the girls behind him causing a ringing sensation in his ears. Unable to resist, he spat and muttered to himself, Quan Ji Young organized this tournament probably just to show off. Maybe this guy didn't hire a bunch of actors to improve himself. He's too sick. Finally, someone recognized Park Jimin. Their face showed a momentary surprise, followed by an expression of joy. Park Jimin. Kim Jenny shouted and then vanished on the spot. Jung ho stood there, only hearing Kim Jenny's scream, turning towards the now-vanished figure. Kim Jenny ran to his side, pulling his arm shyly, saying, Oh, you're here too. What a coincidence. Nice to see you. I'm here too. This scene caught Jung ho eyes, making her extremely angry. However, she quickly ran over to him. Suddenly, another girl appeared. Slim-waisted, long-legged, and endowed with ample bosom, she ran up, patting Park Jimin's shoulder from behind, looking delighted. Hello, Park Jimin, do you also like basketball? Park Jimin felt dazed, silently cursing under his breath. Damn it, one more girl. Oh God, today's luck is not on my side. More than half of the lick targets are all gathered here. He sensed a bit of bad luck today, and this scene made the male students around him go wild with excitement discussing fervently. Is that Kim Jenny? So beautiful. Who's that guy with her? Oh, he's Park Jimin from the literature department. Look, not only Kim Jenny, but also Kim Harry Won dumped her old boyfriend from him. Wait a minute, isn't that Jung ho -Zia? Rumor has it that she and Park Jimin have some ambiguous relationship. Just as the crowd was animatedly discussing, the unexpected voice of the school's big sister echoed from behind. Discussing others like this makes me sick. It startled the guys, who quickly dispersed to the sides, saying, Oh, sorry, Madam President, forgive us. We won't do it again. Please forgive us. Then, from the literature department, the number one beauty Kim Jisoo, accompanied by the chemistry department's reigning beauty Park Min Young, strolled onto the basketball court, instantly elevating the atmosphere. The cheers from the male students echoed everywhere. Men are disgusting. This stadium is full of foul smells. Okay. Stop talking. Let's watch the game later. On the basketball court, Quan Ji Yong had just snatched the ball and was about to sprint towards the basket when he suddenly spotted a familiar figure. Not only that, but the guy was standing amidst a crowd of female students, chatting and laughing. Seeing this scene, Quan Ji Yong became furious. He muttered under his breath, Damn it, that coward part Jimin is here too. Surrounded by so many girls, can't they see me, a high-level male god? Luckily, Kim Jisoo is here. This is a chance for me to show off. I've been practicing basketball for two and a half years. That timid Park Jimin can't possibly defeat me. Thinking so, 
Quan Ji Yong smirked, his eyes carrying a hint of disdain. Then, he aimed the basketball towards Park Jimin. If it were an ordinary person attacked unexpectedly like this, they would undoubtedly not react in time. But Park Jimin was different. His reaction was as quick as lightning. The ball was only inches away from him when he raised his hand to block it. Park Jimin tightly gripped the ball in his hand, his face suddenly turning fierce. In the heat of the moment, Park Jimin was genuinely furious. He exclaimed, Quan Jiayong, what do you mean by this? You lost to me in piano, so now you're resorting to cheap shots for revenge. Isn't that too childish? Quan Jiayong shook his head, his gaze icy as he looked at Park Jimin. You don't even have the right to seek revenge. Dare to come out here and face me one on one. I'll give you three basketballs. Quan Jiayong was not joking. The guy seemed clueless. The humiliation from the previous encounter seemed to have deeply imprinted on Quan Jiayong's mind. Determined to use this match to redeem himself, he questioned whether it was an opportunity for revenge or just another means of enduring more disgrace. As time passed, the stadium became increasingly crowded. People flocked to witness today's basketball match, drawn by the presence of the school's principal, Quan Jiayong. Moreover, many beauties of the school gathered, adding more excitement to the atmosphere. If you like to play, I'll play with you. Park Jimin tossed the ball back to Quan Jiayong. However, this throw carried three times the strength of an ordinary person. Observing Jimin's movements, Quan Jiayong prepared to catch the ball, thinking, a little basketball throw can only be so powerful. He, the throw of this clueless guy. However, Quan Jiayong underestimated the strength and speed of the throw. When his hands touched the basketball net, an immense force surged through causing him to curse in pain. Damn it! His arms went numb, and his legs, standing upright, struggled to withstand the impact. He fell to the ground, rolling in agony. No one expected that a basketball throw could make Quan Jiayong, a person with a robust physique, tumble down in such a humiliating manner. In front of numerous beautiful girls, the situation was truly embarrassing, and even Kim Jisoo found it hard to believe. Oh my! Quan Ji Yong is the captain of the basketball team. How could he miss catching Park Jimin's throw? Park Min Young playful lips commended, Yeah, it's just brute force. Men always love to fight. A group of players rushed to surround Quan Ji Yong, asking, Captain, are you okay? Is there anything wrong? Quan Ji Yong got up from the ground, his face even more difficult to look at, simmering with anger internally. With such strong force, this Park Jimin looks frail but his power is enormous. Park Jimin responded to Quan Jiayong's challenge with a confident and composed demeanor. What's the point of a one-on-one? -on -one? How about we play five-on-five -five to test the skill of the school's basketball team? This statement shook the entire school, and the stifling atmosphere made it hard to breathe. All eyes were now on Park Jimin. Kim Harry one couldn't hide her surprise. She had only seen her idol running, not knowing Park Jimin played basketball. Kim Jisoo also showed a hint of concern. She truly didn't want to see Park Jimin ridiculed by everyone. Park Jimin understands the piano, and his skills aren't bad. But when it comes to basketball, he might not be that good. The onlookers began to express sympathy for Park Jimin and took a few moments to commemorate him. However, Park Jimin was genuinely only momentarily stirred. During his high school years, he had dabbled in basketball for a while. But the lack of perseverance was the limiting factor. In terms of basketball technique, he couldn't compare to Quan Ji Yong, but his physique surpassed Quan Ji Yong by a considerable margin. Reaction strength and flexibility, not to mention his systematic approach, were always ready to buff additional strength. Quan Ji Yong cast a gloomy look and then flashed a sinister smile. Five versus five, on the court, the referees are all on my side. Do you dare to play five on five with me? Ha 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 ha, foolish part Jimin. This isn't five on five, it's more like one versus nine. The match swiftly kicked off, with Quan Ji Yong on the offensive and Park Jimin on the defensive. The basketball court became vibrant, with every gaze concentrated on the two male students standing opposite each other, Park Jimin and Quan Ji Yong. One, a professional basketball player, and the other, a novice just starting to learn the game. As the referee's whistle sounded, the two teams began to move. Quan Jiayong held the ball, and the basketball in his hands seemed like an extension of his body, his graceful movements captivating the spectators. His speed was remarkable, skillfully, 
and sharply maneuvering the ball. Now you're definitely going to lose, ha 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 ha, a basketball novice like you. I'll show you how I'm going to torment you. Wait until I crush your face, and Kim Jisoo will know who deserves her. Park Jimin casually watched Kwon Jaeyong, defensively displaying unprofessional movements. Moreover, he was sandwiched between three robust players, almost rendered helpless. The four players on Park Jimin's side had also sold out, and the match unfolded unlike expectations, lacking any suspense. Indeed, in just a dozen seconds, Kwon Ji Yong easily broke through Park Jimin's defense, as if it were a walk in the park. Quickly, Park Jimin also noticed that his four teammates were letting water through, cooperating with Kwon Ji Yong. Kwon Ji Yong, do you think I don't know that everyone on the court is your actor? Who needs teammates? I'm enough on my own. After careful consideration, Park Jimin began to call upon the system. System, I want to enhance my basketball playing skills, because the owner hasn't mastered this skill yet. I need to spend five enhancement points to improve the skill. System, continue enhancing. I want to use 35 experience points to boost my basketball playing skills. I want to show off. Congratulations to the owner for upgrading to a basketball superstar. A second later, a familiar surge of energy flowed through Park Jimin's entire body like warm water. At the same time, a mysterious and incomprehensible feeling appeared in his mind. Park Jimin's body, which was initially stiff on the basketball court, suddenly relaxed completely. It was only then that Park Jimin realized a true basketball master not only needs exquisite ball-playing techniques, but also requires a firm mentality and superior physical strength. As he approached the basket, Quan Ji Yong confidently flashed a smile. This is the time to showcase courage. I will use a beautiful slam dunk to end the game. The female students cheered. Captain Quan Ji Yong is so good. Captain Quan Ji Yong is so handsome. He soared high, adopting an incredibly cool posture, preparing for a slam dunk to explode across the entire school. Just at the moment when he was about to steal the hearts of countless girls, Park Jimin suddenly disappeared from everyone's sight. He rushed towards the basket at lightning speed. Quan Jae Yong was just a few meters away from the basket. For him, making a slam dunk at this moment was a piece of cake. At this moment, the whole school watched without blinking. Just as the ball was about to touch the rim, Park Jimin unexpectedly reappeared. He surpassed Quan Jae Yong, leaped high, and swatted the ball away. Kwon Jae Yong was dumbfounded, and the female students were ready to scream. This moment was silent, and no one knew what to say. Captain Kwon Jae Yong plays basketball so well. How could he be blocked by Park Jimin? Unbelievable. His team members couldn't help but be astonished. How did he do that? Did you see? Not only did he shake his head and disappear. Damn, this isn't a paranormal phenomenon. The air felt stifling, as if someone was squeezing it making it hard to breathe. Quan Jiayong's face turned pale and then white. He stared intensely at the figure of Park Jimin, his mouth gaping without uttering a word. Here, dear, I can't believe it. This must be an illusion. Park Jimin spun the basketball on his finger, walked towards Quan Jiayong, and said coldly, It's my turn now, Captain Quan Jiayong. I will show you what defeat looks like. Before he could finish speaking, Park Jimin was blown the whistle by the referee, and shown a yellow card. He stood there in shock, his face becoming hard to look at. Then he looked at Quan Ji Yong with anger, thinking, foul, Quan Ji Yong. Do you feel any shame, getting a black whistle? Right after the black whistle sounded, Quan Ji Yong was awarded a free throw. With his experience, he executed a precise free throw, sending the ball into the basket. The first goal of the match belonged to him. Quan Ji Yong smiled triumphantly, his cold eyes staring at Park Jimin. Park Jimin, how good are you at playing basketball? Can you handle a black whistle? The basketball court has its own unspoken rules. Park Jimin, you're really childish. However, the referee's decision to blow the whistle on Park Jimin for a foul infuriated many spectators. They couldn't believe that the referee would make such a chaotic call. What kind of foul was that? Why is the referee pressuring Park Jimin like that? Is the referee biased? Even in a friendly match, they have to use a black whistle. It's truly embarrassing. Someone shameless like this can represent a university. It's truly disgraceful. The crowd erupted in shouts and curses, demanding an explanation from the referee. But the referee remained silent and walked away. In the hearts of the fans, 
Park Jimin did nothing wrong. In reality, Park Jimin didn't care about winning or losing in today's match. However, Kwon Ji Yong was excessively arrogant, looking down on him, which made him feel insulted. Furthermore, he exploited the unwritten rules on the court to pressure and oppress him, making Park Jimin even more furious. Unable to bear it any longer, the anger within Park Jimin flared up to the extreme. Kwon Ji Yong, you have truly provoked me. I can forgive you for cheating, but I won't allow you to violate the spirit of sportsmanship. I will give you, this miserable wretch, a game. Afterward, as if with divine assistance, Park Jimin could effortlessly snatch the ball, whether it was from the hands of teammates or opponents. As long as someone held the ball in front of him, he seemed to move so fast that no one could keep up, and the ball would inevitably end up in Park Jimin's hands. This was an absolutely astonishing hand speed on the basketball court. Channeling the strength of a person sweeping away all opponents, Park Jimin moved at the speed of light, rendering opponents unable to catch up. His powerful breakthroughs and elegant ball handling left opposing players attempting to obstruct him. But all their efforts were in vain. He was too quick, too strong, and too agile. Afterward, he leaped into the air and executed a successful slam dunk. Right after that, another slam dunk, adopting an extremely cool pose hanging on the rim. Following were straight shots to the backboard and beautiful 360-degree spins, requiring incredibly advanced techniques. Park Jimin moved across the court like a celestial star, shining brightly and leaving a profound impact on the countless spectators present. In the stands, everyone stood up and cheers and applause echoed incessantly. Park Jimin appeared like a god competing on the basketball court, moving gracefully and flawlessly, with each movement perfected to the smallest detail. He executed breathtaking shots, causing the audience to cheer wildly. Meanwhile, Kwon Ji Young felt both angry and helpless as he watched his teammates unable to stop Park Jimin. He began to erupt, surround him, or else foul him to stop him. Then, he pointed at Park Jimin's teammates and shouted, You guys too! On the basketball court, it became a chaotic scene as both teams rushed toward Park Jimin to steal the ball. Park Jimin just smirked contemptuously, and his speed continued to escalate. His movements seemed pre-programmed, snatching the ball, blocking, deceiving, and dribbling smartly. Refusing to be stopped, he displayed both aggression and finesse in shooting. Each of his moves left opponents dumbfounded, prompting the constant question, What is this? His magnification reached a point where everyone couldn't clearly see what he was doing. He could score from any position whether inside or outside the penalty area. Quan Jiayong's net resembled a New Year's Eve fireworks show, continuously shaking, and the field turned into a captivating and unpredictable swamp. Almost as if Quan Jiayong couldn't recover anymore. Half an hour later, the stands became eerily quiet. People stood frozen in place, no one moving. They were awestruck, helpless in the face of Park Jimin's extraordinary abilities. The audience uttered incomprehensible words uncertain how to react to his talent and effort. What on earth is this? How does he do it? Does he really need to go all out like this? Even knowing this is a match reeking of cheating. It's too overpowering. I don't know what to compare it to for coolness. Why is he trying so hard for? At this moment, all players and referees on the field could sense an involuntary force deeply affecting them, even making them start to doubt the meaning of life. Park Jimin, this freak, is basically not human. How can someone elevate basketball to such a realm? This surpassed their imagination. Without challenges, there would be no injuries. Park Jimin was an embodiment of sportsmanship, always giving his all, facing any difficulty head-on. He served as inspiration for all basketball enthusiasts. The referee recalled the lessons he taught his son. Son, a referee is the boundary of a match. When the whistle blows, you must act in a way that leaves you with no shame. The father smiled, patting his son's head, believing his son would uphold that. However, the son did not live up to his father's expectations, and the father began to feel remorseful. For respect, you say, is a match's outcome not about the score, but whether you gave it your all or not, or is it for the passion? Everyone remembered the matches they had participated in. There were victories that didn't bring joy, and there were defeats that still left them satisfied because they had given their all, carrying a spirit of sportsmanship. But now, they have lost their passion, only chasing after money, ready to compromise their conscience for victory. 
This makes their emotions complicated, full of contradictions. When Park Jimin enlightened the masses, they felt small, ordinary. All bowed their heads in shame, regret, and emotion. Compared to this man, we are so hideous it's indescribable. Simply an insult to the game of basketball. The sides of these people echoed in the dim atmosphere of the stadium. The stadium lights shone down on them, making them look even more dejected. On the vast basketball court, only these people remained standing, looking at each other in dismay. At this moment, Park Jimin felt no more obstacles, turned around, and found everyone had stopped. This made him wonder, what's going on? Did they give up? People in the stands stood up, not understanding what was happening. The players are still standing still. What's going on? Has the basketball team gone crazy? Are they not going to continue? Though Park Jimin didn't understand why everyone gave up, he knew he had won. Kim Jisoo looked at this man with a brilliant light, her eyes filled with admiration. Park Jimin used ethics to convince others. This is the true spirit of sportsmanship. Park Min Young stood beside, her eyebrows frowned, her lips curled. She appeared very uncomfortable with Park Jimin. She thought he was just a show-off, not worth caring about. But in the end, Park Jimin's actions made her have to respect and applaud. She knew he was a person with extraordinary talent and determination. As for Kwon Ji Yong, at this moment, he was furious to the point of being bloodthirsty. He looked at everyone in anger, thinking, What the hell is this? Do you still want to make money? Looking at the score now, 60 to 2, Kwon Ji Yong looked at Park Jimin with eyes filled with disappointment and hatred. He knew he had lost in a humiliating way, and it was all because of his excessive confidence. He remained silent, his facial expression extremely uncomfortable. At this moment, he realized that Park Jimin was truly cunning. Initially, he wanted to make Park Jimin lose face, but unexpectedly, he was the one exposing himself to humiliation. It was too embarrassing. Not stopping there, Park Jimin, unabashed, mocked and said, Quan Jiayong, you have insulted the game of basketball, and all the subsequent humiliation is something you brought upon yourself. Just by blocking this shot, you can wash away your shame. Park Jimin's mocking voice echoed throughout the basketball court, making the audience silent and attentive. Their eyes were all focused on Quan Ji Yong, waiting to see what he would do next. Quan Ji Yong stood there, watching Park Jimin dribble towards him. Park Jimin's words seemed to offer him a ray of hope in this pitch-dark night. He knew that if he could block this shot, he might be able to turn the situation around. I'm not truly defeated yet. I still have a chance. With determination in his heart, Quan Ji Yong rushed towards Park Jimin, using all his strength to prevent him from scoring. As he closed in, Park Jimin leaped high. Seeing Park Jimin, a dark thought crossed Quan Ji Yong's mind. This is your own doing. Go to the hospital, Park Jimin. Thinking so, Quan Ji Yong's eyes carried a hint of malice. He jumped and exerted all his force to thrust into Park Jimin's chest. Quan Ji Yong's thrust collided with Park Jimin's chest strong enough to hear the sound of breaking bones. However, the sound did not come from Park Jimin's chest, but from Quan Jiayong's forearm. The pain quickly set in, making terror appear in his eyes. He fell backward to the ground, writhing in agony, exclaiming, How could this happen? My arm. Quan Jiayong's resistance seemed non-existent in front of Park Jimin. He remained unaffected. Approaching the basket, Park Jimin executed a successful slam dunk causing the audience to erupt in cheers. The spectators could hardly believe what had just happened. They looked at Quan Ji Yong lying on the floor, holding his broken arm, but there was no sympathy. Instead, they showered Park Jimin with wholehearted admiration. The one who achieved an absolute victory on the basketball court is Yoon Ji, with an extremely dominant demeanor. He, extraordinary, has left a deep impression on many girls here, creating a tremendous shock for them. Following that, a series of chain reactions unfolded, leaving Park Jimin utterly bewildered. Ting. Subject number three. Kim Jisoo. Ball licking. Goodwill score 96 points. Reward for successful enhancement, plus 10 points. Ting. Subject number two. Jung ho -ziok. Ball licking. Goodwill score 96 points. Reward for successful enhancement, plus 10 points. Ting. Subject number one. Kim Jenny. Ball licking. Goodwill score 97 points. Reward for successful enhancement, plus 10 points. Ting. Subject number four. Kim Harawan. 
ball licking towards the owner, achieved the breakthrough in goodwill score with 95 points. Congratulations to the owner for the successful reverse infiltration, converting Kim Harrywan into the owner's ball licker, reward 22 points for enhancement. Congratulations to the owner for acquiring the proficient dance skill. Because the owner possesses this skill, the system has upgraded to level 10. Even though Park Jimin didn't spend a penny on Kim Harry Won, his performance was truly outstanding. Moreover, she was particularly fond of athletic guys and Park Jimin excelled in every aspect. All of these factors led to Kim Harry Won's successful reverse infiltration. At this moment, Kwon Ji Young lying on the floor looks at Park Jimin, feeling extremely disappointed and regretful. Just for a moment of anger, he has lost everything. Park Jimin gazes at Kwon Ji Yong with a cold, condemning look, saying, Whether it's about skills or character, you are not worthy to be the captain of the school basketball team. Competing with you, a trash like you, is an insult to my basketball skills. After saying this, Park Jimin immediately walks away, leaving Kwon Ji Yong sitting there, looking after him with a resentful and defiant look. Then, Kwon Ji Yong angrily shouts with a challenging tone, Park Jimin, don't be arrogant. Let's just wait and see. I will make you feel ashamed sooner or later. Meanwhile, next to Kim Hara Won, a few girls who have just become fans of Park Jimin are talking excitedly. Park Jimin is so handsome, truly a dream man. Yes, and he's also excellent in sports, perfect indeed. I just wish to meet him once, that would be the happiest moment in my life. By the way, did you manage to record Park Jimin's slam dunk just now? I was so engrossed in watching that I forgot to record it. Hearing this, Kim Harrywan scans the crowd with her eyes, trying to find Park Jimin among them, but she can't spy him. Feeling a bit regretful, she thinks. Hated, can't find that Park Jimin guy anywhere. Originally, she intended to find Park Jimin to give him water, but now Kim Harrywan can't help but widen her eyes as she sees many rivals surrounding him. Her eyes glanced over and she noticed that Kim Jisoo also had a water bottle. The two girls looked at each other without knowing what to say. Kim Jisoo seemed hesitant and embarrassed, as if wanting to avoid Kim Harrywan's gaze. Kim Harrywan felt extremely uncomfortable. She didn't want Kim Jisoo to have the opportunity to approach Park Jimin. Moreover, Jung Hoseok and Kim Jenny also had water bottles. The four girls looked at each other without saying a word. The atmosphere around them was a bit gloomy, mixed with a hint of tension. Regardless of who among the four, they all carried a not-so-light sense of jealousy. Each of them was eager to compete to hand her water bottle to Park Jimin. While the group of girls was overwhelmed by jealousy, Park Jimin suddenly disappeared without a trace. No one knew when Park Jimin had left the stadium. Such a chance, if not seize, when will it come again? Returning to the male dormitory, he couldn't help but feel anxious. Luckily, I ran fast. Otherwise, I wouldn't know which water bottle to choose, and a serious accident might have occurred. Park Jimin shook his head, dispelling the thought from his mind, and went to take a shower. It's really comfortable. Playing basketball makes you all sweaty. Taking a shower feels amazing. While Park Jimin was drying himself, his phone on the table received a notification. A person named Bad Boy Group in the Emperor Chat Group has sent you a friend request. Ha, huh, a friend request from the Emperor Chat Group. What's going on? Park Jimin promptly accepted the friend request from Bad Boy Group. Hello, President Jimin. Greetings. Is there anything wrong? Or is there something you want to ask? Do you want to know if President Jimin is married? Hearing that, Park Jimin couldn't help but be surprised. What on earth is this? A few days ago, President Jimin, a well-known entrepreneur in high society, generously donated $500 million to assist the struggling Import-Export Corporation on the brink of bankruptcy. However, the true purpose of President Jimin was merely to win the heart of the young lady from the Yang family. This incident became a hot topic in the Emperor chat group, sparking lively discussions. The legend of President Jimin made people increasingly perceive him as an extraordinary person. Not only was he wealthy and powerful, but he also demonstrated great generosity, willing to help those in need. Therefore, a user with the ID Bad Boy Group, named Oh Young, sought President Jimin's assistance to help his sister, Oh Young Sil. Oh Young Sil, a famous actress in the film industry, is only 22 years old this year. She has won the Best Actress Award and is hailed as the top goddess of the domestic entertainment industry. However, she recently became embroiled in a scandal. 
experiencing a decline in social media ratings, a decrease in her reputation, and facing a 30 million compensation for breach of contract. The biggest mistake in her life was not adhering to the unspoken rules, leading her into a difficult situation. Despite being the daughter of the O family conglomerate, their family is facing difficulties, and 30 million is a significant amount for them. O Young, with tears streaming down his face, choked up and clasped his hands as he looked at Park Jimin earnestly. Oh Young Sil is my older sister. In setting up this meeting with Chairman Jimin, besides seeking your forgiveness, Chairman Jimin, please take my sister as your wife. Oh Young, the second son of the O family conglomerate, explained clearly. He not only recounted the incident, but also highlighted his sister's connections with those who had harmed her in the film industry. Listening to Oh Young's account, Park Jimin roughly understood the situation. The incident where Oh Young Sil was banned from acting for a year seemed to leave no hope for her return to the film industry. Due to the On family being a prominent clan, with numerous connections in the entertainment industry, even backed by Jin, one of the four tycoons in Mado, they had the power to manipulate everything in the entertainment world, including well known figures like Oh Young Sil. As long as there were unclear reasons, the On family could easily control everything. Park Jimin sipped his coffee for a while before responding. Take your sister as my wife. Are you trying to have me marry into the Tao family? Hearing Park Jimin speak, Oh Young panicked and refuted, No, not that. I was just, just joking. I was afraid you wouldn't pay attention to me, so I brought up my sister to capture your interest. Now that public opinion doesn't support her, and there's a need for compensation, I want you to buy my sister's villa. Oh Young's voice grew increasingly quiet, ultimately becoming a mere whisper. Park Jimin could also see the disappointment on his face at this moment. If Park Jimin intervened to help, the On family would have to show some signs of submission regarding this matter. Because Chairman Jimin possessed the talent and authority to face any challenge, no one doubted his capabilities anymore. However, in the end, Oh Young only addressed the issue of selling the villa to raise compensation money. Park Jimin took a sip of his coffee, his eyes gleaming brightly. Buying a house, I actually need a private residence. Recently, there hasn't been any gold to spend money on. Moreover, Oh Young Sil is a movie star. Surely she knows how to spend money, right? This thought made him even more enthusiastic. Oh Young Sil appeared at this moment. Indeed, the ideal target for him. Buying the house for compensation. Moreover, she's entangled in a scandal. Whitewashing certainly requires a lot of money. In the context of a 90 trillion one entertainment system, the amount spent on her is just a drop in the bucket. Park Jimin placed the coffee cup on the table, appearing serious as he looked at Oh Young and said, I can help. Set a time for me to meet her, and I'll take a look at the house while I'm at it. Oh Young stood in shock, eyes wide open, unable to believe what he had just heard. He quickly nodded with joy. All right, all right, all right. Afterward, Oh Young, overcome with happiness, tears streaming down, took out his phone and said, I will help you schedule a meeting right away. Chairman Jimin indeed seems like a legendary hero, offering a warm hearth on a snowy day. Timing couldn't be more perfect. I heard Chairman Jimin recently invested a significant amount in the Yang family conglomerate. If my sister marries him, it's not entirely impossible. For him, having such a brother-in-law is a stroke of luck. Thinking so, Oh Young excitedly hugged the phone, feeling immense joy in his heart. He knew that with Chairman Jimin's assistance, all the difficulties his family faced would be resolved, and his sister, perhaps one day, would transform from a carp, swimming through the Dragon Gate, soaring across this land of flowers and prosperity. Meanwhile, his sister was currently under tremendous pressure from the billions of netizens who were mocking and ridiculing her from all sides, not to mention the enormous compensation she had to face. She felt she could hardly bear it any longer. The phone bell continued to ring insistently, urging her to make a decision. Tell that Mr. On to leave. I know he holds power, and not all the rumors outside are of his doing, but I can't bow my head. At this point, she couldn't bear it anymore. She hung up and slammed the phone down on the bed. In a fit of anger, she screamed as if trying to release all the resentment and pain bottled up inside. The old man with a decaying body wants to sleep with me. Damn it. But what should I do now? There's too much compensation money for the contracts. I just want to be a simple actress. Why does it have to be so difficult? She began to sink into deep thought, and the more she thought, the more her psyche was severely affected. A compromised solution began to take shape in her mind. She trembled, 
lips tightly sealed, her eyes showing a hint of confusion about what to do. She felt like the whole world was turning its back on her, with no place to turn, and she sensed profound loneliness and despair. She knew, this trip to Mado is a trade-off. This pure body will never be clean again, but there's no other way. Society is just like that. A girl who once embodied innocence and purity found herself thrust into the abyss of despair by the harsh realities of life. She had endured countless pains, humiliations, and ultimately came to the realization that wealth, interests, and fame were the most crucial aspects in this society. Without money, there was nothing. At this moment, another call came in. On the other end of the line, Oh Young excitedly spoke, Sis, it's me. I've found you a grand and powerful backing. No need to worry about money anymore. A backing, you ask. You've recently started selling yourself, haven't you? Selling yourself sounds harsh, but that's what's been trending on the illustrious President Jimin's hot search lately. He's agreed to buy a house for you and has promised to handle your matters. Oh Young paused for a moment when he reached this point, the smile fading from his lips. Oh Young Sil immediately grasped his meaning. A sense of disgust surged within her, even bordering on nausea. Working in the entertainment industry, she was well aware of the rumors circulating on Weibo. She had an extremely negative impression of this character, the so-called illustrious President Jimin, known for spending money on female streamers everywhere, not exactly a benevolent benefactor. Alongside the On family, it was like President Jimin. Ha. Huh. Hearing that Oh Young wanted to introduce President Jimin to her, Oh Young Sil immediately transformed into an authoritative figure, starting to scold her younger brother. What kind of illustrious name is that? An old man wanting to take advantage. Oh Young, you're helping an outsider harm me. Just wait until you get home. I'll show you. Although Oh Young heard the sharp and furious reaction from his sister on the other end of the phone, making him slightly uneasy, he found himself quite fond of this man named President Jimin. If the day came when President Jimin became his brother-in-law, he could boast and gain prestige at Gyeongbado, overshadowing even you, Ah and or the white-haired, Upon reflection, it was all very exhilarating. Even if his sister disagreed, he would still choose to stand by President Jimin's side, with an attitude unlike any other day. In the past, Ogyeon would not hesitate to retort and argue back when scolded by his sister like this, saying he was as feisty as fresh shrimp. However, in this situation, Ogyeon spoke to his sister with an entirely different demeanor. He no longer confronted her, but instead used a mix of sweet talk and persuasion. Sis. Trust me just this once. President Jimin is truly influential. Soon you'll be taking him to see the house. Remember to treat President Jimin well a bit, okay? Having said that, he didn't wait for his sister to respond. He promptly hung up the phone. Oh Young Sil, upon hearing this, became even more furious. She clutched her head once again, only able to scream in despair. Ah, all men are wicked, even my own brother. Then, she raised her hand to the sky and began to swear, I, oh young Sil, even if I jump from a high place and die at home, I won't need a single penny from any man. Meanwhile, after hanging up, oh young continued to chat with Park Jimin for a few more sentences, mostly praising the image of his sister to cosmic heights. However, what saddened Park Jimin the most was that oh young Sil, a beautiful and talented actress, if not unexpectedly, would have become a major star. But just as she was soaring high, she was undermined by the unwritten rules within the entertainment industry, damaging her career. Yet what impressed Park Jimin about Oh Young Sil was that, despite being fired and compensated for the contract, she remained resolute and refused to compromise with the unwritten rules. Zeitgeist International is a sophisticated urban area, combining luxury villas and high-rise apartments, highly praised for its convenient location and modern design. The luxurious villas, designed with four floors, each with two rooms, and the modern high-rise apartments, with over 30 floors, are part of this complex. Oh Young Sil lived in a villa area just a five-minute drive from Park Jimin's house. This neighborhood isn't bad, the distance from the villa area I bought before is also quite close, and the spacing and orientation of the buildings are not bad at all. So this is Oh Young Sil's house. Unexpectedly, I and the big star are so close. Park Jimin, for some reason having never met a star before, eagerly wanted to meet her, so he kept ringing the doorbell continuously. Oh Young Sil, hearing the incessant doorbell ringing, became extremely annoyed, 
muttering to herself. This is too fast. I've never seen a woman so irritable. As she stepped out, she grumbled. Don't ring anymore. Even an old man isn't this impetuous. The doorbell is about to be broken by you. As she opened the door, Oh Young Sil's eyes carried a hint of surprise. She didn't expect the legendary President Jimin to be so young and handsome. Park Jimin asked coldly, Hello, excuse me, are you Oh Young Sil? I'm a friend of Oh Young. After that, making her forget all the initial annoyance, and with a slight blush, she thought to herself, Is this person really President Jimin? Too young, and also too handsome. I've been in the film industry for so long, and I haven't seen any male actor with such charisma. Well, I'm right. Before Oh Young Sil could finish her thoughts, Park Jimin pushed the door and entered. Park Jimin had no intention of creating a good impression on Oh Young Sil from the start, taking Mindy as a lesson. Park Jimin drew the conclusion. If the initial impression is too good, the system of flattery cannot successfully bind and spend money. So, from the moment he met her, he displayed a very arrogant and uncultured attitude. How to leave a bad impression in her eyes. Once inside the room, Park Jimin boldly approached the seat, smirked, and said, Mizzo, don't be too rigid. Please have a seat. Indeed, this approach was very effective. Oh Young Sil, seeing Park Jimin had a relatively good initial impression. Park Jimin was young, handsome, and even younger than her, contrary to her imagination. However, right after that, she discovered he was very impolite. Before she could invite him, he pushed the door and entered, at the same time giving her a malicious and lecherous look. In her heart, she felt extremely uncomfortable. Damn it, this is my house. However, afterward, she still displayed a friendly attitude and greeted, President Jimin, not little brother, are you not going to continue viewing the house? The house is quite decent. I have finished looking at it. Of course, the important thing is not the house. Park Jimin spoke ambiguously making Oh Young Sil feel a bit uncomfortable. What is this guy doing? He looks strange and gives me the creeps. The important thing is that I want you to be my lover. The flattering system actions opened up. Name Oh Young Sil, age 22, height 168 centimeters, weight 50 kilograms, duty score 92 points. The girl has a favorable impression towards the owner, with a score of 35 points. Binding the flattery relationship creates a charming woman. With a favorable impression, surpassing 95 points towards the owner, it will successfully reverse. Identity transformation. The other party will become the flattery of the owner, rewarding enhancement points by 30 and rewarding skilled performance skills. When the system successfully bound, Park Jimin smiled gently instead of being flustered. Oh Young Sil, after hearing this, rolled her eyes with disdain. Want me to be your lover? You're disrespecting someone. If you have a few dollars, you act all proud. Let me show you how I can humiliate you. Clearly a top-tier actress, she didn't show any attitude on the outside. After thinking for a moment, Oh Young Sil coldly said, You're quite straightforward. Fine, being your lover is not impossible, but I have conditions. First, a luxury car worth over 10 million. Second, an apartment in Tom Sun Rivera in Mado. Third, you invest in two films worth over 500 million for me. Of course, I will be the female lead if you find the conditions too strict. She stated three extremely excessive conditions, especially the third condition, which could be considered extremely unreasonable. Even for a billionaire, it would be almost impossible to accept. If not for the fact that the basic tycoon could not meet these conditions, Oh Young Sil was convinced that Park Jimin would definitely not be able to meet her overly demanding requirements. However, when Park Jimin heard these three conditions, his expression showed extreme excitement. Really? This is okay. This is easy. A Tom Sun GV apartment is not enough. Should I buy a few more? Can each of my sisters and my dad have one? Oh Young Sil was a bit stunned, and in her heart, she couldn't help but doubt. What? Aren't my conditions a bit excessive? Oh Young Sil still looked at Park Jimin in astonishment, unable to believe what she was hearing. However, not stopping there. Park Jimin took a dominant posture and continued speaking. It seems you like acting, but I don't really understand this industry. So how about this? You go register a television company, and I'll give you two billion to be the CEO. You can act however you want. Not finished yet, Park Jimin threw the keys to a Ferrari onto the table and continued. This is the key to the Ferrari. 
worth over 20 million downstairs. Part Jimin had more guts than brains, immediately diving into business matters. He took Oh Young Sil's account number and transferred 100 million for her to spend. The effect was immediate. Within 30 seconds, Oh Young Sil's account received a message from the bank and the notification bell rang crisply like a roast pig. In this moment, Oh Young Sil's face immediately turned pale with a clear expression of horror. However, right after that, she frowned, her eyes revealing suspicion. How wealthy is Park Jimin exactly, transferring 100 million so easily like this? The car and the money transferred. Park Jimin stood up arrogantly and left, leaving her sitting there in a state of confusion. The encounter between the celebrity and him ended in less than 15 minutes. Half an hour later, Oh Young returned home. Sis, I'm back. Suddenly seeing Park Jimin's Ferrari parked in front, Oh Young joyfully exclaimed, Oh, isn't this Chu Tech Jimin's Ferrari? Haven't you left yet? Then he hurriedly ran into the house to welcome Park Jimin. However, as Oh Young opened the door, he only saw his sister sitting there and asked, Sis, why are you alone? Where's Chu Tick Jimin? I saw his car still downstairs. I thought Chu Tick Jimin was here. Oh Young Sil, looking bewildered, replied, You mean that Ferrari? Chu Tick Jimin gave it to me. Hearing this, Oh Young felt like he was struck by lightning, dazed. The events unfolded so quickly that it felt like a dream. He stared intently at the car keys on the tea tray, his eyes filled with shock. He didn't know what Park Jimin had done, or why, he would give such a luxurious gift to his sister. After a while, Oh Young regained her composure, but a hint of envy lingered in her heart. Huh, that over 20 million won car was given to my sister. Why didn't they give it to me? Oh Young Sil still looked bewildered and continued. Not only the car, Chairman Jimin also transferred an additional sum of money to me. Curious, Oh Young asked. Did he make a down payment for a house? Like 10 million or 20 million? Oh Young Sil raised her phone and replied, 100 million. Immediately, shock widened the eyes of the little brother, his mouth agape, unable to believe what he had just heard. Right after that, Oh Young began to whimsically speculate. He hasn't even bought the house, and he's already given my sister 120 million. Chairman Jimin is indeed showing interest in my sister. I told you so. There's something going on. He, am I about to become Chairman Jimin's brother-in-law? Ha 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 ha. The more she thought about it, the more elated Oh Young felt, showering her sister with continuous praise. Seeing this, Oh Young Sil could only shake her head and sigh. This younger brother is truly incorrigible. At this moment. Oh Young Sil thought to herself, being his lover isn't entirely out of the question. Part Jimin's handsome and stylish demeanor stirs something in me. What am I thinking? This guy opens his mouth and demands that I become his mistress. I should hate him. But he handles things so neatly and decisively, especially when it comes to money he gives me. She couldn't fathom it. Someone I didn't know before like Part Jimin. Why would he treat me so well? At least he's not like some other men who only talk about love but don't show it in action. He transferred the car ownership to me. This 100 million, go ahead and spend it first. If it's not enough, I'll transfer more. He's the kind of person who can't bear to see a beautiful woman suffer. He has his business to attend to. Yet from start to finish, he hasn't laid a finger on me. Truly the demeanor of a gentleman. I really don't know what to do. I thought I'd never love again. But Chairman Jimin makes my heart flutter. He truly is a perfect man, wealthy, powerful, and even considerate. What should I do? Should I accept being his mistress, or should I refuse? I'm genuinely torn. This person doesn't seem to be a bad person either because his behavior is casual, but his actions are measured. Thinking about this, Oh Young Sil's favorable impression began to rise. Specifically, she gained an additional 10 favorability points from Park Jimin. Oh Young Sil favorability plus 10. Oh Young Sil favorability plus 10. Currently, her favorability score stands at a negative 5 points. Meanwhile, Park Jimin had been absent for quite some time before reappearing. Although Oh Young Sil's favorability towards him had increased, the increment was not significant and still maintained a negative value. Park Jimin smirked slyly and said, It seems that dealing with a star is indeed different. Even though I've spent over 120 million in favorability points, it remains this low. This time, if I can make use of Oh Young Sil, I'm sure I can earn a substantial amount. So from today onward, 
I'll give her 100 million every day. Let's see how long she can resist. Park Jimin knew that Oh Young Sil was a woman with high self-esteem. If he continued to transfer money like this, sooner or later, she wouldn't be able to withstand it. At that point, he could easily manipulate her and say straightforwardly, being a lover is crystal clear. When facing an unpleasant situation, I don't want to find excuses. Being straightforward is better than twisting things later. Crush all unstable factors from the start. Money can solve problems. Emotions should not be involved. Otherwise, I won't be willing to help her. Spending money is the way to dominate. The scene ships to Havard School today, a momentous day for Park Min Young. Her graduation ceremony is taking place, marking the end of her academic journey and the beginning of the challenging row ahead in the real world. After the commemorative photos, she announces relinquishing the presidency to Kim Jisoo. Unexpectedly, Kim Jisoo willingly steps down, and ultimately, Du Sha Yun steps up to take the position. This leaves Park Min Young extremely uncomfortable, feeling that Kim Jisoo might be willing to give up everything for Park Jimin. After pondering throughout the session, Park Min Young decides to pull Kim Jisoo aside for a heart to heart talk. Kim Jisoo, Park Jimin is not a good person. You should leave him soon. After today, when I graduate, I won't be able to protect you anymore. However, Kim Jisoo remains steadfast. Part Jai Han, Part Jimin is really not as you think. I've seen him at the basketball game, with countless girls offering him drinks. This proves he's not a promiscuous person lacking in male integrity. Kim Jisoo confidently continues. You've seen it yourself. Part Jimin doesn't accept drinks from just anyone. He handles things well and you see nothing wrong. Perhaps you have a problem with your perception. If I may tell you, on your birthday night, Park Jimin created a heroic tale of rescuing a damsel in distress on the way home. If you want to flatter yourself, go ahead. Do you still see anything wrong? She believed that when she said this, Kim Jisoo would have an awakening. However, to her surprise, there was no change in Kim Jisoo's expression. Park Jahan, I think you sometimes have excessive prejudices against men. I'm concerned about your mental state. As she spoke, Kim Jisoo took out her mobile phone, searching for news about Park Jimin on the school forum. People praise Park Jimin everywhere. It's just that his sense of justice is too strong. He acts heroically not just once or twice. Look at this. He didn't even know you would come that day. He couldn't have staged it himself. Park Min Young began to feel conflicted internally, thinking about Park Jimin's strength on the basketball court, capable of defeating all. And then considering how he handled troublemakers, it seemed not impossible. Could it be that I really misunderstood Park Jimin? The more she thought, the more awkward Park Min Young appeared on her face. Maybe I've been too extreme toward men. Afterward, she hastily ran off. Oh, Park Jahan, where are you going? Our class hasn't taken photos yet. As Park Min Young ran, her face turned red, and she felt embarrassed, thinking to herself, too shameful. It's all because of my ridiculous self-esteem. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed the content, please don't hesitate to hit the like and share buttons. Your support is a huge motivation for me to continue creating more videos. Additionally, there are many other interesting story videos on my channel, so feel free to check them out. Thank you.